<laughs> Welcome everybody to our uh, July 23rd webinar 2016 and today we have Brian, Christine, Jim of course, Megan, Michelle, Omran, Sarah, Sheer, Shirley and Sabrina and with Jim Jim, would you like to say the name of the people that are with you? Thank you. Welcome. Oh, we can't hear you, Jim. Um, yes. Oh, there we go. Yes. Um, I have a lot of new people here today. With um, There's an angel group here that's uh, with John Bailey's angel group. And I'm going to have them introduce themselves. Um, I'm going to start over here with Eileen or... Ilian. Ilian. And then we have Garrett, Garrett Kim, Kim John, John, Josh, Josh Angie. Angie's back there, Raymond's here, and Mark is here. So we have an, a nice group today here at the, in the house. Is there any, any announcements today? Um, yes, there is. So I would just like to uh, let everybody know that I could not post the link on the website for some reason. So it was posted on the Google Play um, Plus page. So always look for it there first. Uh, please post your questions on the Google Plus page so we're not having to search like four different places. Um, also, Jim will be on next week. So please look forward to that and um, um, also on the 6th Ivan Teller will be channeling he will be a, a guest channeler so please do join and support him and um, and that's it I don't know if, if you have any projects going on Jim that you would like to talk about um, no it's just that I will I won't be here in the middle of August I will be doing Going sort of a retreat. I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be called, but I'm going to be away. I won't be channeling or doing anything. I'll be doing some meditation and some uh, prayer and fasting and stuff like that in the middle of August. So I won't be there for two weeks. So the two weeks in the middle, the 13th and the 20th, um, I guess Sabrina and Kim and whoever else is uh, wanting to channel should get together and f uh, figure out a schedule for that. Um, but right, I will be doing it next week again. So because I thought Ivan was going to do it next week, but uh, he's going to do it the sixth. So, and then um, that's about all I have for right now. Does anybody have any particular entities or that they want to speak to today? One at a time, please. <laughs> People were asking for Takur. Okay. Uh, Slava asked for Takur. Okay. And um, I think uh, Sheer also asked for Takur and an angel. Liney asked for Takur. Um, okay. And Takur. Uh, uh, Leonard asked for Takur. So. <laughs> wow. Lots of people asked for Takur today. Okay. Marcy, Archangel. An angel, Marcy yes. Archangel. An, angel. an archangel would be great. Angel has is going to come today, so yes, that would be great. Celestite, we have Celestite right in front of me, oh. and we have an angel group, an angel class with me today. So I'm not sure which angel's coming, but I have a feeling that we're coming. So. Very good, Jim. Anybody else? Just in case. Someone else posted Lakash, which would be amazing. Oh, yes, oh, Lakash. I always, I miss him. Yes, Lakash is a good choice. <laughs> Anybody here? Who would you say? Someone from the uh, Spiritual oh, Healing Masters. Yeah. Okay, Spiritual Healing Masters. And you said someone? Oh. Grindle. Grindle. <laughs> Somebody said Grindel. Very oh, no. Zoroaster. Zoroaster? <laughs> no about him. 
Zoraster, I I know who that is. Yes. Excellent. Yes. yes. Well, let's Mary Magdalene. Yeah. So there's a lot of requests today. Let's see who comes through. Well, I know Takur is probably going to come through since so many people requested her, but um, we'll see who comes through first. But okay. uh, is everybody ready? Yes, Shirley also said Grindel, so just wanted to oh, say Oh, Shirley that. also said Grindel, okay. Grindel's been very popular lately, so I'm going to do a, a small meditation and we'll bring somebody through, whoever there is there waiting first. I know that there's some people waiting to come through, so it is... That's a beautiful thing. Everybody say a small prayer. It, can we start with a small blessing from someone? Okay. I think that it always goes better if we start with a blessing. Um, sure, would you Anybody? like to give a blessing? Who? Oh, me. Sure. I, oh, I can do a blessing. Go ahead. All right, very good. Who? Me? Yes. Yes, you. All right. Okay, I'm a little bit shy, but I'll try, okay? Very good. Thank you. Naharahe me dekeria na kataiolo lo kutaye mu kutoyo su. Seseria pa kaula ye na hebe kataiya pa kaula ye mu kutu. Tataria na hete kataiya kataiya be kete. Seseria ma kaula ye mu kutoyo bokolo ye. Me hebe kataiya pa kau. Tataria ma kaua re kete ine i te seseria taula. Nene ne kataiya pa kaula ye mu holo kutoyo mu kou. Ene kete i te ise semene taula. Okay, thank you. Very good. Love and praise to God the Father and to all those that are helping today. And be with us and guide us and direct us. Let the integrity flow and let it be all good and well with your soul. Let it be happy, let it be joyful, and let it be informative. Let it be protective and let it be understood by all. Okay, I'm going to do a little meditation. Thank you for that prayer, by the way. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little meditation, and we'll bring someone in right, uh, very shortly here. Just very, give me a couple minutes. <laughs> very good. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. Thank you, Sabrina, for taking over today. I appreciate it. Greetings. I am Takur. How are you all today? Very good. Thank you, Takur, for coming. Much love, Takur. Thank you for asking. Are there questions today? I sense that there are many that want some answers. Okay. Um, let me start with uh, Emma D. She said... Uh, I would like to ask the court if it's possible to get a body scan and for the removal of any negative or redundant implants or suppression technology. Thank you. Very well. I know who Emma is, and uh, we have already noticed some things there, and it will be taken care of. Okay. Um, right now, I go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, no, continue. I will say what I have to say in a little bit. Okay. Um, no, that would sit for her. She doesn't have any more questions. I understand. 
and then um, from Liney, um, she's interested in knowing if she has a past life connection to D. She's a lady in her metaphysical group. I will check on that for her. Yika chapa ata chijiwatienta. There is some connections, but I will get to Liney uh, on a personal level and let her know what they are. Okay. Um. At this time, let me make a small report on the fourth dimensional energy cloud that is coming. We have moved farther out into the, into the solar system as not to be disturbed by the cloud that is coming. So, uh, but our communications will continue. We should be able to communicate even through the fluctuation of the fourth dimensional energy cloud. So do not be worried. We still will be in communication with you. Many times uh, people have asked us if we are, are going to leave completely, but we are not. We are just going to stay outside the realm so that we do not get pulled in by the cloud. But it is it is safe at this point so we are still moving forward with all of our plans with humanity I will still be able to, to communicate clearly I believe during this period of time the only thing that might be interrupted is any medical infor medical infusions or things of that nature may be affected but we cannot determine that at this point because we do not know how it's going to affect humanity. That is to say, the infusion itself will not be affected, but humankind will be affected in such a way that they may not be able to accept the infusion the same way as they did on normal third dimensional uh, times, for lack of a better way to say it. Continue. That is all okay. I had to say. Okay. Now, how come how come it it affects you? Are you leaving because you don't know how it would it would affect you? Well, it that? would draw us into the cloud. We don't want to be inside the cloud because there's a lot of fluctuation in the fourth dimensional energy there, and that would affect us. Yes, all the different fluctuations in that energy. Now. We are moved away because it is a strong and very powerful cloud, and so we do not want to be pulled into it. We want to stay clear of it so that we can maintain status quo. Okay. Understanding that if we were to be pulled inside of it, it would be very difficult to get out of, for one thing because the energy there is very strong and the second thing is there is a lot of fluctuation within the cloud in certain areas of it um, not that the whole cloud is filled with fluctuation no but there are certain parts of it that are and if we were in that part it would ruin communications or cause it to be very unstable therefore we would prefer to remain outside of it so that we can remain in control. So have you noticed um, any changes within the humans uh, due to, to the cloud? Yes, we have. There's a great deal of fluctuation and agitation with humans as it, as it occurs right now. Um, they seem to be very agitated and very sensitive to the energy and there is a lot of deja vu's a lot of uh, different things happening with humanity they try the the more positive humans stay the better it will be for them going through this time however it seems to be causing agitation as it's approaching because they are not used to this kind of fourth dimensional energy fluctuation in the body and brain so therefore those that are more third dimensional are not as affected as much but those that are experiencing a lot of fourth dimensional growth are experiencing more fluctuation and seem to uh, have moments of great uh, agitation or anxiety 
but it does not last long, but it is lasts long enough to make an effect on the human behavior. Has anyone experienced that? Yes, I have. Yeah. Yes. Irritant. It is it makes you irritated for a short while because the energy is fluctuating so strongly at some point. You see the energy is getting stronger, it's getting closer. And so actually, if you want to be honest about it, the energy field is not really moving very fast, but the solar system is moving toward it at a faster rate because of the rotation of the the rotation of everything around the center of the galaxy. And so therefore, the cloud does move, and it's moving in the same direction as the solar system. So that it makes sense that they're moving in the same direction. But for some reason, the uh, fourth dimensional energy cloud is attached to some something in that area that it doesn't move very far from a certain area in space. It sort of st fluctuates around this particular area in space and that's something that we're not sure why it does that. But it stayed in the same place or very close to the same place for a long period of time. We are, we are actually monitoring it and it's only moved a few thousand miles in several months. So that is, that is not very far when in the scheme of things. So to occur some of the events that have, you know, there's a lot of events that have happened uh, in the last few weeks. Um, yes. And, you know, some, a lot of them very tragic. So is that related to that or is that something that was just written? There are a couple things happening at this point. Uh, one of the things that has happened is that possession is taking place on those with low self-esteem and dark energy without their permission. This thing that happened in France, the person was possessed and ran through the crowd, but he would normally not be, and he would normally not give permission for that, but something has happened that they were able to get to him and possess him at that time, and he was able to, they were able to possess him and and have him do that but it was not a contractual possession they just possessed him um, without him wanting to be he was just in a very low state a very low energy state a very low thought process and somehow they were able to get a hold of him this is very unusual and it's not something that is normal and it is not something that is permitted actually. So, so this was a very unusual case. He so, was not working for anyone. He just was possessed and was and, and if you look at his background there was nothing in his background of psychological in, incompatibilities or an imbalance. He just was a, a very low self-esteem person, a very sad depressed individual but they were able to take over somehow I do not believe he gave permission for that I could be wrong about that but at this point it just appears that somehow they were able to take over him which frightens me a little okay um, and and the what happened in Turkey the coup that happened in Turkey that um, was something that was coming for a long time. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I think Michelle had a question relating to to what you just spoke about. Yes. Much love to her. Much love. So yesterday, um, Brooke has worked on, I don't really know his name, but she was with him yesterday and she's worked on his etheric chakras before. Yes. And he's very, um, I don't know what he is. He's supposed to be super special. So yesterday when I met him, he was profusely sweating. He had just worked on her and removed two attachments. 
and she was very, very uncomfortable. First question, if you can tap into it, she would really love to know what the attachments were. One that came out of her head felt like a big slug, and the one that came out of her either heart or solar plexus area felt like it had teeth. Yes, I understand what this is. I do not really want to say the names of the entities over the okay. airwaves. Okay. But she, yes, they did, they were authentic and they did get removed and one of them was um possessing her fear. Uh was a it was a, a possession of fear because she has great fears about moving forward and being successful and this was removed from her. That's beautiful. However, in the process apparently something happened to the man like we were just talking about where his personality completely changed and he was starting to get belligerent about needing to destroy evil. Um, which reminds me of another person I'm thinking about with, who has been in my awareness recently who is also belligerent with his message from the Elohim, which is an oxymoron. No, that is not <laughs> the, Elohim is, the Elohim is not a belligerent group. They are a loving and very high, high exactly. Very high. If there is belligerent messages from any group that is of a light heart, you know that something is wrong and has there has been tampering with that message. The Elohim right. would never give a belligerent message. Or exactly. never act in a belligerent way. In fact, I find it hard to to even know that they could act in a belligerent way at this point. They are so high in spirituality and and in their their methods are are very much above reproach. Exactly. But the guy who was with Brooke yesterday, and I wish I knew his name, but I don't. He suddenly got very belligerent like the agitated and he sounded like a like a little kid who's like on wearing a cape and wanting to destroy bad guys had he protected like, himself had he protected himself from the things that he removed okay because see i wasn't there i walked in after the fact and i just started helping her with you know toning and angel I see. stuff could have and taken then, on one of the the entities could I have just, gone into him at that time if he was not protected. Okay, is there a way I can help him out, or you can help him out? Yes, you you can help him. I can help him. If you know what you're doing, anyone can help him. I'm but, not sure. I don't know what I'm doing with uh, that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, if you get me in touch with him, I can help him. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Much love to you. Much love. It's, does anyone in the room have a question for Takur? Yes, I have a question. No, uh, hold, hold that. Hold on, Brian. Anyone? No, I, I mean with, with Jim. Ah, is there any questions? I do not think so at this time. Brian, you may ask your question. Yes, hello, my friend. How are you, Takur? I'm very well. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Uh, my question is uh, just a two-part question, real quick. First, uh, the this fourth-dimensional energy, yeah, um, the creation of it. Is it something that's just natural in the universe, or was it created by extraterrestrials or angelic energy? It would seem to be a natural phenomenon at this point. We have not detected any sentience within it, meaning that there is really no life forms. In in there. There is some plasma which means that it could possibly become sentient at some time, but it is not sentient at this time, and it is just fluctuating energy, and it is possible to have these kinds of anomalies in space. There are many kinds of anomalies in space that even your people do not know about as of yet. These kinds of fourth dimensional clouds have appeared in other galaxies as well. Ah, I see. Interesting. There are actually some clouds 
of fifth dimension and other dimensions. I don't know how to explain it, but there are some dimensional clouds created from the beginning of time. Perhaps the Creator uh, put them there for a special purpose to keep balance in certain areas. I am not sure. We, but it is a curiosity because we do not know how they form and they, we do not know how they, why they do not move very much. They seem to be fairly, very, fairly slow moving clouds. They do not move very quickly and they do not, they, they stay fluctuating and powerful but they do not seem to be uh, diminishing in energy very much. There is some energy re release of, from them, of course, and that is what you're feeling while, when the cloud gets closer. But it, the actual field or aura around the cloud is actually fairly weak compared to the actual cloud itself, which, of course, some people would say, well, that's not abnormal. But in this case, the strength of the cloud would seem to uh, generate a greater aura. But only as you get very close to the cloud does the aura get very strong. The aura that you are in right now that reaches out hundreds of thousands of miles, of course, is very, very light and very... It does have effects on humanity and things of that nature, but it does not seem to be very strong. But as you're getting closer now to the September deadline, the September 7th or 8th, when it's, when it's possible that your solar system will be moving through it, it is not that strong. And, in, and not until September will you be feeling this, a stronger... Um, a stronger pull from it, or a stronger uh, aura from it. And the other part of that question, then, um, is that like a? Um, it's almost like, is it like a magnetism then, like an effect? It's almost like our consciousness. We can affect it, and it can affect no, us. It it does, unlike a magnet, which yeah. sometimes can repel it itself or attract itself but it is more like the attracting part of uh, the magnet it draws on fourth dimensional energy and that is why it is drawing the timelines together a little closer as it moves it draws the timeline together so you may be able to see things from the other timelines you may be experiencing deja vus which means that you're slightly ahead of time in in some way that is what deja vu is, is you're, you finally just get slightly ahead of yourself in time and, and that moment seems like you're repeating it. But wow. you were actually just had it and you, you have it again. But this, is, this energy draws fourth dimensional energy to it. And that's why you are so affected by it and why we are, is that we are fourth dimensional beings and you have fourth dimensional energy that has been released into your systems since the 2012 time so I mean not that you didn't have fourth dimensional energy before then but it's been activated in a greater way if, since the end of 2012 so okay. now it can pull on that energy and it can affect that energy in a greater way therefore you will be experiencing things that you have not experienced before. Anyone who is more third dimensional and does not have the energy moving around as much and, and or is not using it will not be a, affected as much, but they still will be affected. Uh, there, there will be those third dimensional people that will start seeing things and think that they are actually, that couldn't possibly be. They've, it's already happened a few times where people say, I, I thought I saw this or that. And what they are seeing is another a fluctuation in the timeline that something from another timeline came rather close and they were able to see into it just briefly. Wow. And then it fluctuated away. Interesting. But they thought it was perhaps an apparition or that, you know, they were going a little batty, but it's not true. 
it is an actual fact that you can see into the other timelines especially when the cloud is coming through you may be able to see some especially with the fluctuating areas some areas so of that, that timeline come closer and then farther away again so does that mean also the ships and actual aliens on the planet we might be able to glimpse up those people that are fourth dimensional or third dimensional that are in your space are leaving the solar system because they know that they will be able to possibly be seen or affected by the cloud in some way they do not know there's not enough study about the cloud to know exactly what will happen if they will be seen or not so many of the ships have moved away or to a, a greater distance so that they will not be affected just like we have that, that's all to occur much love my friend thank you so much much love to you as well Sheer. hello to how are you very well Sheer. how are you I'm very well uh, I have three very short questions one Except from what I've told you that I started to experience, I didn't start to experience any Mandela effects. It's because of Remulac uh, protections? Yes, Remulac has a cone or, a, or some kind of protection around you that you will not be affected by this cloud as much. Of course, that is because they are a very powerful race and can do many things that not many species can do. I see, but uh, it's supposed also to plant, let's say, seeds in us for the future. Will those of seeds course. be planted? Yes. They know what they are doing, and they know how they want to affect you. So they are using the protection in the way that they see fit. And actually, it's, it's helping you. You will be able to see things around you and not be affected by, by it. Mm. Okay. Um, also, there are different channels going around saying that uh, when the cloud will come, certain people will be locked in the first, uh, fourth density, and some people will not be in the fourth density and will be locked in third density or something of that nature. I do not know how they could make that prediction when no, none of the species that I know have have studied the phenomenon well, well enough to know how it's going to affect human beings. They are making some guesses on how that it might affect human beings, but these are not have not been experienced by humanity ever. So it's been 237 million years since Earth has gone through this cloud. That is like one revolution of the galaxy so it is that before the last time the earth went through this cloud no humans existed so mm. therefore how would they know how it affects human humanity and how will they know how it because of certain things that humanity are unique with how it will affect them actually and I do not think that anyone will be trapped in the cloud it will just continue to the cloud will continue to move the solar system will continue to move at the same rates at as, as it always was and when you come out of the cloud things will should return to normal within a, a reasonable period of time of course there is the still the aura of the cloud and it is greater at the other side as you move through because you will be pushing out energy from the cloud so it may last a little longer it may be a little stronger for a while but I do not know how they can make any predictions about what it will do to humanity when no human has ever been through it before uh, yes what I meant it was the beings that they are channeling and when I say locked in I'm saying some will move through the through a fourth density and some will stay in third density. That I was my meaning. Yes, I do not know how they would know that. That okay. has not been proven. It's maybe a speculation. I see. And the cloud will be uh, from September, I think, the 6th in my birthday and until uh, February. 
is there going to be a peak, like some sort of a week or a month when it's going to be at its uh, fullest no. form? No. Let me tell you this. We do, there will be a couple different peaks, and the reason why that is is because in some areas of the cloud, the, the, the uh, fluctuation is light. And in other areas of the cloud, the fluctuation is stronger. And there is places where it's stronger and lighter and stronger. So you'll be going through a period of stronger fluctuation, and then it will calm down and be more of a slower fluctuation, and then speed back up again. We do not know what is causing that, but it is what it is. And so there will be times when the fluctuation is stronger, I do not know if you want to call that a peak or not, but that is something that we have, as we've analyzed the cloud, it, it does seem to have slower moving energy in it and then faster moving energy. And then some of the faster moving energy in one portion is very dense, which means that the movement is very, very fast. And it goes very fast between a small space of uh, a, a, a small area of space, and some areas move very casually through long periods of space. You would have to visualize it the way we see it, but okay. there will be some definite surprises, I'm sure. Mm. I see. But I do not think that it will harm mankind. Fourth dimensional energy is something that is natural to the universe. So it is just as fifth dimensional and sixth dimensional and whatever kinds of energy you want to call it, they're all natural to the universe because God created them all. However, you are not used to experiencing the fourth dimensional energy in this way. I do not think that it is harmful. But I do think that it may cause some people to think that they are going crazy because they're going to be visualizing things that they feel are not there but are actually they're seeing into different timelines and things of this nature. So be aware of that, that you are not going crazy. You may just get a glimpse now and then of other timelines and things of that, that nature. And there have been many people that are already experiencing a great deal of... Uh, deja vus and a great deal of things that really aren't there but their their sensitivity to the fourth dimensional energy is much higher and they're getting uh, glimpses already and the, the the strongest part of the energy isn't even here yet or I I to your planet yet let's see and my last question would be like after the cloud, what uh, will happen to you, Kyle? Will it open certain stuff, like it will be and it will be gone and that's it? It will be gone. We do not know how it's going to affect human humanity in the long run. We yeah. know that it will affect the energy of fourth dimension, which is in all of your minds and being a uh, being actually getting stronger in all humanity because of your next step in evolution which is telepathy now we are wondering if this will bring a faster evolution to hmm. your kind at when we first started to observe your telepathy we first started to see the beginning of your next step in evolution it was going to take 170 to 200 years we're wondering if this cloud will speed that up. Mm -hmm. It is very, very possible. But we cannot make that speculation. It is something that, I mean, we can make a speculation, but it is not a fact. We know that it will affect and bring out more fourth dimensional energy. In what way, we're not sure. Will it cause more psychic energy to be produced? Will it cause other portions of the brain to be opened that are now you see you only use a very small portion of your brain and much of the brain has many other gifts in it telekinesis psychic energy the ability to grow extra limbs things of this nature that have not been awakened in your mind yet 
we are wondering if some people will become like uh, mutants in the sense that the, some of this energy in other portions of the brain will be opened to the extent that they will be able to use gifts that were not evolved yet. Mm, the X-Men. This is how the X-Men exactly. begins. <laughs> but thank you very, very much. Just, we do not want to put that... Actually, we don't really want to, to see that happen. I think that that, that would be rather... Uh, it would be a, a catastrophe in many situations, but because you are not evolved to handle that at this time, so mm -hmm. we would not want to see that happen. But we uh, we do see that it is possible because of the way that the fourth dimensional energy fluctuates. Could it possibly open some areas of the brain that have not been opened yet? Could it stimulate a greater telepathic? Could it stimulate healing processes? It could um, bring up the immune system to a greater height. There are many, many, many things, many positive things that it could do. And we try to look at all the effects of fourth dimensional energy as a positive thing. But you see, that is yet to be seen. Okay. Yet not what Continue. Megan. Is there any more questions? Uh, I'm done. Thank you very, very much, Toko, and much love to you. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. It is always a pleasure to speak to you as well. Much love. Namaste. Much love. Get your wa. Muha kosh kishuma. Hello, Toko. Hello, who is this? This is Megan. It's Hello, Megan. It's lovely to commune with you. It is lovely to meet you. Um, within the last year or so, friends yes. that I've known for many, many years have been sending me messages and emails about abilities that they have not been able to understand or speak of, and it is seemingly out of the blue. Um, I'm wondering if this is a glimpse of <laughs> ascension. Why do they come to me? Um, is this yes. part of of the? Uh, is this going to happen more in the future? Yes, it is possible. These people have had spiritual awakenings, and some of their gifts are more spiritual than they are part of the brain opening up. Meaning that gifts from above are being given. Now, there are some of those gifts that are from mental fourth dimensional energy being very active so therefore if they've done a lot of astral travel if they know how to bilocate or things of this nature this could also stimulate fourth dimensional energy enough to open smaller gifts in the brain but not to their fullest capacity as to be dangerous does that make sense to you yes it does but there are many spiritual gifts happening at this time as well. So do not be confused between the fourth dimensional energy and spiritual energy, which is something slightly different. It does stimulate fourth dimensional energy, but it does not open areas in the brain. And so those examples you gave are um, examples of fourth dimensional... Um... Correct. Okay, yes. This I understand. Thank you so much. That is all. You're welcome. Remember, the, the, many of you are on a spiritual journey as well as a journey to, for ascension, the next step in the evolution for your kind. And so the spiritual journey is a beautiful thing, and the fourth dimensional energy may help that. But remember that spiritual energy from God and from the angels and the, uh, things of this nature is a different kind of energy that is working within you. It is not necessarily fourth, fifth, sixth. Fifth. It, uh, angels and God are in a, a realm outside of all the dimensions. And so their dimensional energy is very different because it is not part of fourth, fifth, or sixth dimension. It is of their own. 
angel energy, godlike energy, Elohim energy. These are outside of regular normal realms, usually. Well, Elohim is actually in a realm, but it is so high. It is different than giving any particular kind of realm energy. Do you understand that? Yes. So therefore, your spiritual journey with God and things of that nature have a totally different kind of energy and can affect all different kinds of things within the body. But their intention is to help you to grow in spirit and purity and, and, and in the positivities of the world and not to act actually change your physiology or not to change your psychology in the sense that you are going to be uh, a, an advanced human but fourth dimensional energy and energies of that nature can affect those kind of things at least theore theoretically yes thank you very much you are welcome Yetawa. Shirley Surely. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Good afternoon, Takura. It's, a, it's an honor to meet you. I haven't met you yet. It is an honor to meet you. Um, I'd, I'd just like to uh, ask a question. There's a lot of activity going around me at the moment. Um, and it keeps on awake. I keep on getting woken up at 3 o'clock in the morning. And... I'm getting a lot of mixed messages, and um, yes. uh, someone said to me that there was uh, uh, an entity around me from the Talini race. Talini. Yeah, and yeah. It is it is it is it in spirit or in body? Do you know? Because three o'clock in the morning is a spiritual hour. It is um, when some spirits are more active on your planet. It's three in the morning. I don't know. I just asked what was around me, and I heard there was an entity called uh, from the Talini race. From the I would have to look into that because where are you at? And you're in England. Where That's, are you? Yes, yes, in England. That we would have to check that out. I would have to look into that. I will get with you about that later. Okay, thank you. Write, write Jim a note so he remembers. Okay, thank you. Uh, Takura, I have a question from uh, Leander Villarta. Um, hello, my question is, what is Tucker's viewpoint on traveling physically with aliens and are there any messages for me? Thank you. At this point, tra traveling with aliens physically is not really part, is not really allowed by galactic law because first contact has not come yet. And no one should be riding with aliens until first contact. But I know that this is still happening because some species have taken it on themselves to do this. But if they get caught, they will be in trouble. But uh, it depends on the species. You must know that some species are positive and some are not. If they have come to take you for a ride on their spaceship, sight to sight, meaning that you're going in a full body, then be very cautious of this because the only times in the past that they have taken people for rides sight to sight or for the most part they have taken them were to analyze them or study them or to actually do medical testing on them. Make sure that they are friendly and that they, this is not what their intention is. But I know that there are some friendly species that are breaking this rule because they feel that your governments are unkind and un they do not understand 
what first contact really means and how important it is. And so therefore or they are breaking the rules to let some people have the adventure that they always wanted. We cannot do that, however. We must maintain a good status with your government so that when first contact comes, we will be clear and able to set up communications and travel between the, the planets and between the ships without any problem. Thank you. Uh, Omran? Hello, Takir. Yes. It's nice to meet you. It is nice to meet you. Thank you. And I have a question about what you said earlier about energies. Yes. The know how it will affect me mentally, physically, and spiritually yes. in the time of December. And afterwards, because I feel like it will affect me very much. It will activate things inside me. It may, yes. What is your question? Just how it will affect me. This is not known yet. It has not been oh, experienced yeah. with humans at this point. Yes. Okay. I individual understand. human may be affected in a different way. So therefore, how it will affect you, we do not know. There will be a great study being going on okay. as this fourth dimensional energy goes through. And we there will be some protection for those we see that are reacting strongly to it. We will try to give them some protection and some calming for it. But actually, we do not know what to do yet because we don't know what it's going to do yet. So we have some ideas. We have speculation, as others do. And so we are getting prepared for this time in your existence. So much preparation is happening at this time for this event. But we do not know exactly. It could be very easily taken care of, or the fourth dimensional energy may do very little. And this is what we're hoping for that you will not, that you don't have enough fourth dimensional energy for it to affect you in a great way. But there are a few of you that have a great deal of fourth dimensional energy. And so therefore, those are the ones we are really looking out for. But we, there, everyone has some, and everyone will be affected in some way. We're just not sure if it will be a, a very brilliant way or if it will be very slight if it will be extreme this is what we don't know are you done and so yes I'm sorry I was asking if it was done I wasn't sure ah I was just unmuted sorry uh, that is yeah, well, well, it's because I have experienced timeline shifts, shifts in the recent weeks. Yes. And suddenly, I'm just in five years in the future, and I yeah. feel it. It feels like five years. I don't know if it. It will affect sure. some and greater than changed. others. If you're already feeling that great of a shift, you might be getting used to it at this time. Hopefully, when the actual stronger energy comes, you'll be getting acclimated to it, and it will be not so bad. However, I don't know that for sure. It could be that you may experience a, a greater time shift. We know, do know one thing. If you do shift to another timeline, you will return to this one when the, the one that you're in when the when the cloud passes it, the timelines will go back to the way they were and you won't be able to stay in another timeline because you weren't born to it yes it's also the same when I feel it I go into it and then come back immediately or after yes. a few minutes I understand that that makes perfect sense yeah it, it does and my second question is 
well, I have listened to all this information about the the the, the colonies. Yeah. Um, I thought, well, will my body? I mean, will will I handle it if I were to live on the colonies? You could not live permanently in fourth dimensional energy. I believe after 34 days in fourth dimensional energy, having been born to third dimension, you will start, your molecules will start to expand and you will disintegrate eventually. But you see, you were born into third dimension, so you cannot, you can only live in fourth dimension for a short period of time before you start to dissolve. So therefore, um, you can be there for a while and then come back, and be there for a while and then come back. But you cannot stay there a, a very long period of time in human days. 34 days in hum human time is the longest you could stay in fourth dimension. Some people less, some people maybe a day more. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. But you see because it's a different dimension, a different density. Molecule structure is slightly different. And therefore yeah. that is why you cannot live it in it permanently. Your molecule you were not born to that dimension. And so eventually your molecules will start to move in the fourth a uh, fourth dimensional way, which will disintegrate you as a third dimensional being. And it you will not become fourth dimensional. You will just no, cease to exist in that material being. That is how it works. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. That was my question. You're welcome. Thank you for the help. Yes. Uh, Takur, I have more of a a. Um, comment from uh, Slava for you. Yes. It's it's a bit long. Um, so he said, at the beginning of this week, I remember someone brought to me a little girl. She had blonde hair, almost white, and she began to tell me something. She began to say something to me, and I remember she was so happy and joyful. Um, and then I said something gentle and kissed her. This little girl she reminded me of something important, something I need to remember. What we, what we need to remember, and I, and I will remember. And just would like to say thank you for that. Um, and then the second thing was, and I would like to share this experience which I had before I came to the human colony. It was at the summer of 2013. I remember a female energy. She's still very close, and then I remember we embrace um, like we were one being. So I felt deep feelings. I felt unity of oneness, and I remember I felt like I was part. Of, we were part of each other. Um, it was a deep emotional experience. Yes. They were we were dressed in white robes and all the people around were also dressed in white robes and in the next moment I remember we walked down the street the sun was shining we walked together as a group there were several people and I remember there was a little boy and a dog and I felt like this child was like a part of me like we were part of one being I remember we walked and play with a ball a dog panting wood, playing with us. In the next moment I remember we stood close to each other as a group of people. We formed something like a circle and it was an and it was amazing. We began to circle circling in a dance or dance in a circle, I don't know. Our collective dance accompanied with something like acrobatic elements and I remember like a circle and a dance and it was like a universe flying before my eyes. It was amazing. I am not sure what happened, but it was so emotional and deep experience and I would like to thank you for this wonderful experience. It was a uh, past life remembrance from a Syrian culture 
this is one of their the wedding culture and the celebration afterwards. They do have marriages and unities, and this was a unity and a celebration afterwards. The children were born before the wedding, before the ceremony had begun. They were your children. In Syrian culture, you may have children before you are married because that is not a problem in their culture. But it is that if love is expressed in this way, that eventually a union will take place. There are unions of this kind all over the Syrian planet, and the white robes are to express that of enlightenment, knowing that you have come together in enlightened moments of love. You have realized that you are inseparable in some ways, and that you, your life will continue to be inseparable. There are many things about the Syrian culture that speak about unity and fullness, and they are a culture of community, and therefore they have many spouses at times. There are some portions of that society that allow for many spouses and marriages and unities. There are other portions that prefer one or only two. But it depends on what portion of the culture you live in and attest to or attune yourself to. Therefore, it is a beautiful thing that you experience there. Their, their ceremonies are beautiful and very emotional and very loving and all are participating that are part of friends family and even part of the community is invited if they wish to join if they know of who this is if they have something to contribute thank you to Kerr um, uh, Sarah's next I almost Sarah. wish I didn't have to go right after that. But hello to Kerr. Hello to hello, my dear. <laughs> hello there. I love you. I love um, you as well. I have a question because this happened last week. A friend of ours from the group did a healing session on someone else. The, the information was given to me about a lizard being coming out of the person's mouth. And I didn't really give it much thought until the following night. I had a dream of this white cat with a yellow white eyes. And I began throwing up and two of these lizard type beings came out of my mouth. It was like a purge. And this person, as they were healing the other person before she was channeling her higher self and her higher self said that most humans have this this is something that most humans have but they are unaware of this what exactly was this lizard being and I guess just upon hearing it I healed myself of it so what is this interesting they said that most humans have this. I am not aware that most humans have that. However, it is with dealing with sickness. If you are a healer and do not protect yourself always, even one time not protecting yourself, you can bring on yourself some of these a alien um, sicknesses. And they come out of other people and into you. So therefore, if you were healing someone, please protect yourself. You have purged yourself of them, but not everyone has it. Mostly it's healers that get this when they do, do not protect themselves properly. There are different creatures that like to, to cause illnesses and uh, pain in other people. And you, whenever you're bringing these out of them, if you're not protected, they can come to you. So please, as a healer, protect yourself. Now these, now that you have protected yourself and that is 
done. It is always said to protect yourself during healing, especially energy healing and things of that nature. So make sure. They, these creatures are not all that common, however. I, I don't want to make it sound like everybody that does a healing will get one of these creatures if they don't protect themselves. They are not that common, but they are very much uh, negative. So please, yes, please protect yourself so you don't get one. Now, I see that you had two of them. Yeah. Interesting. That is a lot. Oh, who was that cat? I do not know who the cat was. It was not anyone from my species. No, but it looks you... like a little human, like a little earth cat, but it definitely, it looked way, is way like spirit type. It was probably of spirit. Check into that. I believe it probably was of spirit because it helped you to purge. Yeah, that's interesting. Because I was totally unaware of this information before. Well, this but. is rare. These particular, they are like, they are like spiritual beings. You're what they call demons or whatever, but they're very small. They're not the powerful ones, but they are powerful enough to cause illness. Mm-hmm. And they can look like lizards, yes. I would describe them more as ugly. <laughs> Very well. And I have another question. Um, at the moment, my body seems to be going through a, an ascension, ascension uh, process. I can feel new brain paths opening. Yes. And I'm ha it's ha it's having an effect on my spine. So l the last week or so, I've been in sort of not sick because I understood what was happening happening, but it was pain. It's painful. Interesting. <sighs> but you I'm, you I'm realize new this senses is coming online. I'm noticing new senses coming online as this process this continues. Is, there are a couple different species around you, the Hathor and the Naga, that are mm -hmm. dealing with you and preparing you for different things that are coming. They see the fourth dimensional energy and they think that perhaps you're one of the people that will have very strong uh, effects to it. So they are preparing you for that at this time. Uh, do, not be, do not be worried. Mostly it's the Hathors. Uh, because you are their toning, you are the a toning person that they that is most important. Their ambassador of toning, if you will, and so they are protecting you. Very well. So it's mostly them opening up new pathways and things of that nature. Because yes, I they, they're giving my entire you. Body. Uh, they're giving you ways to ground out through these times that fourth dimensional energy will be very strong. They feel that you will need, even though you have natural grounding, they gave it to you at at hot springs. They gave mm -hmm. that to everyone that was in that group. The ability to ground when you say the word grounding, they are giving mm -hmm. you even a deeper grounding effect. You can feel these pathways. Mm. They're giving you but a great grounding effect because you may need it. Yes, but there's a lot of pressure in the brain. This as is well. do not worry about it. They are they they would not hurt you, I'm sure. Oh no, I understand that. That's not a problem yes. for me. And uh, actually the the thought processes from the naga is uh, are working on the brain as well. So mostly the Hathors are working on the grounding procedures. The Naga is worth it, working on something in the brain. And that's why you feel something in the brain with pressure is they are they are working to surround a certain portion of the fourth dimensional energy so that it is not even uh, 
exposed to that which is the fourth dimensional energy that is coming. They want that portion to remain pure, and then they will remove that that uh, covering when it, it's done. There is something oh, okay. in that fourth dimensional energy portion they do not want interrupted. It may be part of the toning, it may be part of the languages, it's something, it's part perhaps of the download that you received. They don't want it messed with. Okay, and I have one more question. Um, so, apparently, I found out that my pineal gland can talk back to me. <laughs> of course. The body can speak. Let me tell you, the DNA can speak to you, the organs can speak to you, the brain can speak to you. Um, all things are possible. The thing is, they, they only speak when they need to speak. They only need... You can talk to them, and they can listen, but yet rarely do they speak. But they do speak when they have to. Yes, and it told me this process that's happening right now with my body will last until the end of this month. Yes. Do not worry. Sorry. and It will not be... I think the worst part of it is over now. Yes, it is. most <laughs> The worst part of it, yes, it was painful. All right, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Much love to you. Much love, Sarah. Hi, Tikar. It's Sabrina again. Um, I have a couple of questions for myself. One was I wanted, I just wanted to confirm with you that um, the ETs had been uh, released, that they went home. They have. Okay. Um, the other question uh, or the other comment I wanted to make was if you could send some uh, healing energy or some vitamins or something for Valerie. Um, she will be going on a undergoing a procedure and I would like her at her best to be able to, to manage it well. Very well. That will be done. Thank you. Um, and then uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you, this was actually personal. Um, uh, I am having difficulties hearing Lanuk. Um, oh. and, and I don't understand why. I do not either, but I will check it out. And we will put you back into contact. Okay. There must be something blocked in one of the channeling areas. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Jasmina had a question. She wanted to know if there was a message for her. One moment. Her message is coming from the angel that is coming next. I cannot give it. The angel must give it. Okay. Um, I also wanted to ask you about... Um, I've been hearing a lot of noises in my house, and, and like the day before yesterday, I, I heard when I went to sleep, somebody was making noise in my room. Yes. And you want to know who that is? Yes. There, there are a couple aliens that come to your room almost every day. Uh, they are protectors. Uh, they should not make any noise, but <laughs> I, they, they are a Yuyel and a Syrian. Sentia also visits, who is a Syrian. She has sent a protector to you as well, and she comes also to visit. Yes, and... And it's interesting because um, <laughs> I I'm almost getting used to it because in the kitchen somebody tapped and they were actually like tapping like trying to make music but I believe that was a spirit if I'm correct. Very well. Um, I am not sure who all is visiting, but I know of a few that um, some are well known to me and others are not. 
but you do have a lot of visitors and a lot of spiritual visitors as well. Yes, I know the angels have been staying around me quite a bit. Yes. And God. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, the next question was Liliana Restrepo. She would like to know if there's a message for her. Liana? Liliana. I did not hear the name. Liliana. Liliana. One moment, please. I cannot attach to her, so I do not know. One moment, oh. please. Where is she at? Um, I am not sure. I believe she's in the States, but I'm not sure what state. I will get back to you on that one because I cannot locate her. Okay, that's fine, Tucker. Um, and uh, Krellick, he wants to know about a canine person that uh, the visit, the visit yes. him. Uh, yes. He wants to know if if it if if it was there physically. It was there holographically, but it. Uh, the way they can do that from the canine planet, it seems almost physical. So therefore they have visited quite a bit. He has many visitors from the canine world. Be, um, I cannot remember the name, but the one of the officers has been visiting him, also Delilah, also uh, uh, someone new, named La Shan. La Shan. So yes, several visitors from the canine planet. Okay. And uh, Sam S. Uh, says, I've been going through some frustration and obstacle experiences lately and want to know if I'm being messed around with by any negative entities. Can you help me clarify what's going on? and help in this matter, manner, matter. When, thank you. When, yeah, oh, can, sorry. Go ahead. Yes, Go ahead. Um, there are some negative beings around, but it is from, they're, they're from, they've been given to him from other people. It would appear that there is a family member that has given him a negative entity because of something that has is going on between them. So therefore, um, you can get rid of that. You don't have to accept that. That that being really doesn't belong around you at all. So um, just r get rid of it. Just say you don't. Uh, how how am I going to say this? You you must rebuke it in the sense that it it has no purpose being around you so and yes it's trying to mess with you because this other person is angry or something there's some kind of problem so they sent some kind of negativity to you so but just get rid of it it's not strong it is messing with you but you can definitely I believe get rid of it on your own okay on that line to Kerr, um, can you help in, I don't know if you can describe in some way for people to learn to distinguish between when it's an entity and when it's just life or you or or you know or a chemical thing. That's a hard one, but the, to make it easy to do this, do a meditation on it. As soon as you meditate on it, you'll know exactly what it is. It will come in your meditation. If you intend your meditation to know what if it's a spirit or if it's third dimension you will get an answer immediately because uh, in your meditation it will come, it will be very plain. It will be very plain that you will know what it is that you are dealing with. If, that, if you do a meditation on that kind of intention, you will find out right away. Most people, that is if you can get into the meditation. Some people cannot even get there. But 
if you can, you will understand what it is. Yajawa, Shutya Bata, Yenoa, Jikotuwa. Continue. Okay, um, because a lot of people have been going through this lately, um, and there, there are some that even have um, some uh, uh, demonic kind of spirits and that kind of thing. So um, remember this: the fourth dimensional energy can incite all kinds of illusions as well. So be sure of what you're dealing with. Do the meditation. Find out what you're dealing with. If you're actually dealing with something of that nature, get help. Because if it is something of that nature, you will need help to get rid of it. If it's just a shadow energy, um, a negative poof, then you won't need much help. But if it's something stronger, yes, you will need some help. But identify it. Make sure you know what you're de dealing with. Do your meditations. Do your prayers. Ask God. Make sure that you are dealing with the truth. Okay, and can people that have their, their crown chakra very open, uh, can they set the intention to, to close it more? Or, you know, if they have the awareness that their energy is going down, perhaps close it so that uh, not anything or everything can get in? There are two times when the crown energy should be open. In birth and in death. Other than that, the crown should remain fairly closed. You can receive energies from the crown. I am not saying that. But if you open the crown, the spirit and life energies, that's where the spirit and life energies come in and leave. So you do not want to be messing with the crown energies too strongly. If you open open it up you can bring in other entities into your energy process which is not good so therefore leave the crown alone as far as using it to gain power in the body you can do it through the third eye much more safely does that make sense to you yes thank you to her and the fourth eye as well the soma you can bring in more energy through the actual third dimensional, fourth dimensional connections, whereas the, the crown is a more spiritual connection, but it is dangerous to mess with unless you know exactly what you're doing because it is the birth area and the death area. You can cause some very harsh things to happen if you're bringing in entities that are not supposed to be there through the life and death area. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that, Tucker. I, I think a lot of people will appreciate that answer. Yes. The crown is sensitive. Of course it has other reasons to exist other than just life and death. However, but if you're opening it up wide, you're in, you have to know exactly what you're doing. Exactly. But to but to occur when people do drugs and alcohol and that kind of thing, doesn't that open it? It opens the third eye, not the crown. Okay. The crown is not naturally opened by drug use. The third eye can be naturally opened by drug use. The crown is life and death. Now, if you get close to death with your drug use, yes, then the crown could be opened. But only if you are, if, if you are overdosing or whatever. Okay, so then when when um, when people have done um, drugs and that sort of thing, that that they get, uh, they seem to get a lot of negative entities. Um, what does that do to? Well, they did not send an intention on their use. It was more careless and irresponsible when they, if they're bringing in negativity. They've done it very carelessly and irresponsibly or with people that have negative energies. So therefore, they can bring in these things inadvertently if they are not responsible. Right. 
And uh, would you say that calling upon the archangels um, whenever they find themselves in really difficult situations is a good choice? The archangels can help. They can help close up the crown chakra if there is overdose going on so that there is no death. But it will be a strong it will be a strong sensation. It will be it will be a strong uh, put downward push if you understand what I'm saying. The angels will be able to help, but it will not be comfortable because you've put yourself in an uncomfortable position and they must move you into a position where they can work with you. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. And I have one last question from Pavel and he wants to know if there's any messages for him. What is the name? Pavel. Pavel, yes. Or Pavel. Pavel, yes. Yes. There's there are things coming for you. You've put out you've put out uh, uh, something that you're calling on something. And it is coming. Whatever it is that you have been calling on to happen is going to be happening soon. That is all I got. Okay, thank you. And um, did I ask you for Jasmina? I'm yes, sorry. but the angels have to give that message. Okay, all right, sorry, sorry. I'm just trying to make sure I, I, I get everybody. Um, I think that was it on the, on the side. If anyone in the room with Jim has any questions, um, Otherwise, I do not believe anyone here does. Okay. No. So Michelle had one quick follow-up question, and then uh, we will let you go. To Kara, I know it's longer than you expected. Yes. Thanks, Takara. Brooke just wanted to know if she had any remaining um, entities um, <laughs> that need to be obliterated. <laughs> no. Okay. Actually, no. Things have. She has healing to do at this time. She has things to bring back into balance. It so, may appear to her that there are things still there, but it is not. Just things are out of balance, and as things get more grounded and things get more normal, you will see that things are will come back to a different, a different attitude, if you will. Would you kindly recommend to her a way in which to achieve balance in this situation? I would, I would say to do some very do the things that she likes to do the most. Find her highest excitement right now and involve herself in that because that will bring everything into balance in a very positive way. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Much love. You're welcome. Thank you, Takar. Um, I want to thank you for coming, for uh, being so kind with your time. I know it's precious I and you're very know. busy. There are others that want to speak. Yes. Thank you, Tucker. You're welcome. Much love. Much love. Namaste. Namaste. Ah. I'm Uriel. How are you? Hello. So good to be here. I feel the energy of the, some of the people that I know. Welcome, Uriel. And I have a message for Jasmine. I know that there has been much that has happened to you and there are many things that you, 
you find hard to, to deal with in the third dimension. At this time, be free of it. You do not have to accept it anymore. It's not part of your contract any longer to be in pain, to be in suffering, to be hurting, to be, to be downtrodden. Things will change. Things will look differently very, very soon. And therefore, the angels will be there to minister to you because that is why you can that is why you can trust them is because it will help your belief system it will help you to believe in a greater and more beautiful God because you will be feeling much better thank you for that message I'm sure she'll appreciate it wonderful um, are there any questions for me I do have something else to say I want to just say that the understanding of angels sometimes is very different. I know that some people have a hard time believing that we exist because A, you can't see us, and oh, to believe in winged birds of, that are men and things of that way, uh, nature is sometimes ridiculous. But let me guarantee to you that we have energies and powers that help humanity give them messages, healing, understanding, wisdom, kindness, and bring them out of situations that can be very dire. Sometimes we move the cars out of the way just so they cannot die at that time because their life is necessary to move forward at a certain situation. There are times when we save humans from from eternity because they need to exist longer on the world that they are at and sometimes we help them to die in a more peaceful way because they have been good kind and wonderful it is just what we do we do many different things we have many kinds of energies and this is one kind of energy that we have. We give much information to the earth. <laughs> much joy, as much as we can. <laughs> but you have to accept it. We can give all the joy you want, but if it bounces off your shield of depression, then it's it just not there. You have to bring it into you. You have to know that that it is for you and that you accept it and make it part of who you are. Other questions? I will give uh, the angel group a chance to see if they have any questions for you. Yes, I feel them. Do you have any comments on the spiritual healing masters and that wonderful class we're experiencing? Practical steps on how to connect to your angels? Um. You're doing a very wonderful job of, of connecting them by way of teaching. Remember that each person has a different perception of that and that each, uh, each master will come to each individual in a different way. Now, angels, you will perceive an angel in a different way than anybody else because you have your own personal angels, you have your own ideas of what angels can do, you have your own perspective of what the angelic world even looks like, but we can come to you and change that perspective or enhance it or give you ideas on what to know and feel and understand. <laughs> but yes, the, just know this, Take the part of it that means the most to you, the essence that comes to you in the greatest way, and internalize that first. That is the first perspective. The first perspective is to find what you relate to the angels with. Is it their message? Is it their healing? Is it their love? Is it their energy? Is it the, is it the way they a way that they move, understand, find something to relate to. And then from that area, it will grow. Because your perspective is different than anyone else's. And your perspective is unique 
and must be unique so that you may grow and understand as an individual, as a personality, as who you are intended to be as a human being. God and angels are uniquely there to help you become who you are to be and to be proud of it and not to shun away or shy away from the person that you are meant to be. And th when you go out into the universe, into the society, that you can be yourself and be fully true to yourself and not fit into the little holes that society would want you to fit in to and make you shy or demure or you can't speak now because we said so. You must be who you are. You must express yourself in the truest form. Now, if you have nothing to say, that's fine. But I think that as you grow as an individual, as you grow in the understanding of God and angels and spirits, you're going to have a lot to say and a lot to think. Because it's a higher realm. It's a higher feeling. It's a higher joy. And we want you to experience that. Do you understand that? We want you to experience the higher forms this planet can bring to you. This planet can accept realms of glory in senses of that. We can bring joy to you. We can bring messages to you and understanding. Accept us. Know us. Talk to us. You see, humans find it difficult to talk to somebody that's not there. And so they don't. They say, what am I doing? I'm talking to the air. I'm talking to God, but I don't feel him, sense him, or understand him really, so what am I doing? Find in yourself, in your soul, that fire of God that he gave you. You are all a piece of God. God gave you a soul. He is part of who you are. You are a creator. You are a fire. You are anything that God is, but uniquely to yourself, some of those things come out in a greater way in you than in anyone else. <laughs> so find that thing. Find that joy. Find that thing that you love to do more than any other thing and attach God to that. Surprise! That thing which you attach God to, those things which you attach God to, grow. Are part of your joy. And you'll say, well, I want to be this or that and I have no idea how to get there from here. I have no idea. Well, it is not hard work, but you must ask. You must believe. Ah, there's the word. Part of your belief system, your belief system, you have to activate it and believe that things can happen that are good. Things can come from otherworldly areas. Things can come to me. I am worthwhile. <laughs> You are worthwhile, even though some people say to themselves, Oh, no, I'm not. God wouldn't want to help me. I'm just a small little nothing, a speck in the line of eternity. Why would God want to help me? Because he created you. He put the soul in you. He put the creativeness in you. Of course he wants to help you. Believe it. Wrap it. Wrap your belief system around that. Wrap your belief system around positivity and that you can be what you want to be. And don't get discouraged if it doesn't happen in a week or a month or a year. Sometimes these things take time to grow. You may not be ready for it yet, but that doesn't mean you're not going to get it doesn't mean you're not going to get it because why would God not give you the things of your joy of your heart when you're ready for it? <laughs>
it gives me great joy to speak to you like this because I believe many people cannot even understand that God is wanting to help them, that God is wanting to be part of who you are. And angels are assistants to God. We are his assistants. We are limited, limited in some ways, but for most things, we can very much help. We can very much help. And you say, well, if God is so great and has, has all this power, why did he create angels anyway? What good are they? Well, he's created angels universe after universe after universe and he says sure I can take care of it all but you know for a little bit more personalized help I'm creating some angels I'm creating some things and if you want some more personalized help sometimes I can send someone to work with you for a longer period of time than just what I have to offer you in in this period and I want you to be happy and I want you to have all the things that you want why wouldn't I if you ask for bread because you're hungry would I give you anything else so therefore believe bring your belief systems right into the heart believe feel feel it I some people say I can't feel anything I can't I can't feel it I can't feel any emotions hardly at all it's the third dimension has batted those things out of you some somehow in some way and so you're protecting yourself by not feeling anything it's not a protection it's a shield to keep out all the good things that God and angels and spirits have to offer and they tell you that you're protecting yourself but you know what you are not you're shielding yourself from great things remember that it's an important piece of information don't shield yourself from great things let them in accept them I know I got off topic but I just wanted to share that with you because I'm excited because I see some movement oh, of course there's always negativity moving in and out of the ranks there's always oh no oh that poor person they're they're just not using the best of their abilities they're not doing what they should do they you know you don't have to accept that you don't you don't have to accept anything that's not really you. If it's from outside coming to you, you can say, hold on, is that really me? Are they really talking about me? Or are they talking about themselves and trying to put me in the same light? <laughs> A lot of people will shed their information to you but it's their information you see it's coming from their heart and it's not necessarily who you are so you don't have to accept it remember that I know that message has been out there before but it has to come back because many people forget it they hear somebody say blah 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 and they accept it and are hurt and whatever and they don't have to it's not sometimes it's not meant to be that way but yet it's it's third dimension it's the way you were taught to accept it you were taught to accept things into your life that really aren't part of you do you understand that is there questions about that one thing we're experiencing during the class is come up and when, speak here when you when we follow these very simple tools and processes we're all starting to connect very easily almost and expands our belief system yes and then more importantly 
there's a tool to verify the truth from our soul's perspective. So then finally we have a way to know what's true for us, for our soul, and it bypasses our mind and bypasses what society has taught us. Correct. So it lets us cut through a lot of clutter and it actually lowers stress and it helps make what's in our best decisions be almost every step of the day is what's in my best interest. Exactly. Follow it. Yes. And then that disengages the mind and it does all sorts of, of amazing things. And Absolutely. Exactly what I'm saying. Yes. yes. Very, very good. <laughs> yes. I agree with that 100%. Because if you are following your highest joy, if you are following that which you know is part of who you are, is part of the, the person that you were born to be, and you are checking in on that all the time, you're going to be a much happier person. Even if it's not right there in front of you, even if it's not manifested at this time yet, you have the belief, belief, hear that word, belief, you believe that it will manifest and believe that you will become the person that you are meant to be. And I can hardly wait to see that, the, that everyone's be becoming who they are so that they don't have to hide or shy away from society or hide themselves because they're not happy with who they are or not happy with some of the things that are happening in their life. They can reach out and say, this is who I really am. This might be happening in my life, but I know who I am. I know that this is me. And I don't have to hide that. You should be proud of who you are. God made you in his own uniqueness to be the person that you are so that you will be proud and you use your talents for the betterment of humanity and the universe. Ultimately, everything that you do that is good affects the universe. I just had to come and say all these things to you. I do not know if there's any questions. Is there? I have a question. Yes. Oh, now there's questions. I feel like it could be applied personally, yes. but also to people in benefit in general. And oh, yes. I was wondering, it's sort of a two-step thing. I was wondering how for the people who wouldn't support you on your path or believe in you until you reach the destination, how to maybe get them to believe you on your path, and then also how to attract people who more would be in support of you on your path rather Thank than you. when you get to the destination. Exactly. And the answer to that is very easy. Example. You must be the example of the person that you truly are. This affects everyone around you and all people. Because if you are an example of a person that just lives in society, living day to day as a regular person in society, do not people see that and take advantage of it. But if they see that there is something in you that is different, that is speaking out, that is more happy, that has joy, does not draw that, doesn't that draw attention to you in a very positive way? Also, whenever these people come to you to give you their opinion, you have that ability to say to them, thank you for your opinion. Uh, and you do not have to rebuke them. You do not have to argue with them. You do not have to give them your two cents or what you think of them because sometimes you think, eh, what a loser. But you can actually give them a great example by being positive and saying, well, thank you for that. I will, I will take that into consideration, but, you know, I, I, may, I have some other ideas as well. You know, you don't have to just arbitrarily accept everything that people say. And also, when you're doing that, other people hear you do that. Your example is drawing people to you. Who you are draws people to you. You can draw very powerful people to you because you are yourself and genuine. Genuine people attract other genuine people. 
they also attract those that would like to use genuine people. So be aware of that as well. You have the users, but you usually can see through them. You you can you can see th what if someone's trying to just get close to you for their own good, their own purposes. So understand that your example and how you are acting in the world is the greatest thing that you can do to let people know who you really are and attract the most positive people. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yes. Go ahead. Oh, come over. Yeah. First question. Does Jim's body need some water? I don't think so. All right. And the next question, and I saw this in the room as well, a day is wondering about her dream, her message with Archangel Michael from the other night. Okay. And what you can tell her. Okay, she's uh, what she's on a path. Uh, a day is on a path of enlightenment. A day is on a path where she is learning to uh, channel and get closer to the essence of spirit, just as we all are in this room and in the world, hopefully. But it is that she is going to find the message of Michael to be that all things are possible. That is the, the message to her. All things are possible. And the things that she wants... She wants many things right now. There are many things that, that are coming and going, and she understands that, the, that uh, only certain things can happen at certain times. But in the long run, a day, all things will be working together for your good. And don't forget that. You are well loved. Valerie? And then we can go. Okay, ah, actually, yeah, well, I have a question for someone else that wrote in. Her name is Carol Lordy, and she has to say okay, that right. her dad, Pierre Lordy, passed away this Wednesday. Uh, she could not speak to him. So she would like to know, does he have a message for her, and do you see her moving into his home? And will you send help to her to have success in this? First of all, I can only speak for him right now. And he's saying that he is in a wonderful place. And he's very happy. He loves you very much. And he understands everything that's going on with you now more than he did before because he has a different point of view. And everything is well. And he loves you dearly. The second thing is, there will be... a there's going to be a time when the home is not available for a little while because of some legal ramifications or something, I'm not quite sure. But it will be as it should be. And he will be talking about that with all those people involved. <laughs> that will be seen. Thank you, Uriel. I believe somebody else in the room had a question for you. Yes, I believe you have a question. Yes. I have a comment and a question for myself. Yes. The comment being, I feel that the, it's not a coincidence, um, the connection between Uriel and my son. Yes. And for myself, I would like some information, if you can tell me, on Kanara and who she is to me. Kanara, is she in space or is she? In, where is this Kanara? Ah. I believe spirit or an angel. One moment, please, and I will connect. Thank you. Just a moment. Yes, she is in spirit. Kanara is a guardian of yours, and she is wanting you to be more aware of her at this time because there are things coming up that uh, that she sees that you need 
protection from. So this is something I think you are aware of as well. And um, she's just letting you know it's going to be all right, that she's going to take care of you in this situation and not to worry. Keep, keep positive and keep, uh, even though it may look dire at some times, it's going to be all right. And your connection, ah, yes, that's good. And my connection to your son. Yes. He is a good boy. Good for you. And he is also very gifted. And we are working with him. Thank you. And you will be proud of him. I already am. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, of course. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. That's two, actually. Yes. I was curious about the the energy that's coming in and how it's going to affect our planet. Yes. As well as if there was any messages for me. Very well. You are Josh? That's correct. One moment, please. The energies, you mean the cloud? Yes. Oh, yes. The energies, I see that we as angels are going to be protecting the earth in many ways. There are millions of angels. You cannot know the names of all the millions of angels. There are big angels, there are little angels, there are angels for this and that and the other thing. And so we will all be around to be helpful in this situation. If we see that there is a need, we will definitely help you out. But as with you, God has told us that things will be all right. God has told us that not to worry, but to be aware that w there will be some people that will need help. And so that is what we're prepared to do. And he's also told us some of the people that will be needed, that will be needing help. So we are ready for that. The other thing is, Josh, for you, you are coming to a, a time of enlightenment. You are, are changing. Your thought processes are awakening, and your fourth dimensional energy is becoming more active. You're seeing possibilities where there were no possibilities before. Do you catch me? Yes. And now that you are seeing that, this is going to awaken another side of your personality. Um, you have always been very pragmatic and very analytical. Now you are going to be a little bit more uh, or a little bit less uh, uh, pragmatic and, and analytical because you, you've already analyzed it at this point. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so uh, there are going to be occasions where you, you're going to jump and be a little bit more si simultaneous. What is the word? Spontaneous. There it is. You're going to be a little more spontaneous. In fact, I think you've caught yourself doing that once already. So maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But it is going to happen that your the joy in you, the the love, the understanding, the positivity will jump a little bit now and then. Does that make sense to you? You're welcome. <laughs> I must go now. Yes, thank you for coming. We appreciate your presence. I'm, I'm I would like sorry, to say I had a question. Thank you. Oh, hold oh, on. Who is, who is talking? Sarah. This is Sarah. Um, oh, Sarah. Yes, I had a question because of um, a comment that was made earlier about protecting yes. oneself when healing. Yes. How do you suggest one does that? Just whenever you prepare to do healing, you just ask that you are protected. Um, many p times when you are preparing yourself for healing, you're thinking more about the client and not about yourself. So therefore, think about yourself first. Prepare your energy, prepare your life force, prepare, I say, some meditations, and protect yourself. And then go into the healing session. And you will be much greater a healer. You will be protected. And you will be um, 
focused because many people that walk into, I've noticed that when pe people do energy healing on your planet, they walk in, they have a cup of coffee, they're chatting, they're doing this and that, but they're not really focusing on the purpose of their meeting, which is to heal people in these Reiki shares and things of that nature. Sometimes they 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 get a little carried away and they're socializing not a problem a beautiful thing actually however when it comes time to help and bring your energy to the situation and bring your energy to someone else you must do a slight preparation and protect yourself does that make sense to you and the yeah. way to protect yourself is put the white light around you or many people have their own methods of protecting themselves against the harshness that can come to them while they're healing because sometimes when you're healing the actual illnesses or pains are coming out of the person as you're actually uh, sending positive beautiful energy through them many times when positivity is flowing through someone, the negativity is coming out. And that would be disease, pain, sickness, bacteria, viruses. So protect yourself from those things. Yeah, because I found myself starting to do some sort of healing with my hand, and it's just happening automatically. Yes, but you see, for you, I would wake up in the morning and just protect yourself for the entire day for the and therefore you won't have to worry worry if automatic healing is happening because there are those people yes and you're one where the third eye the eyes the heart or, or the fingertips and palms just activate okay yes that's exactly what's happening um and who's the being connecting to my my not crown, but the angel chakra in the back at the moment because it's being very Right now persistent. that is Raphael. Because you were speaking about protection, Raphael is big on protection. There are many of us that are big on protection, but Raphael is the king protector of... He is the strongest and best at what he does. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Um, I would like to thank you for coming, and before we let you go, can you give us a blessing? Absolutely. It would be my honor to give you a blessing, and I will speak it in the angelic language because it has so much more meaning that way, and I, then I will give it to you in, in your English, which it loses some things in the translation, but you will feel it in the angelic language in a little different way. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Shira kaha Adonai Pashuta Eriatatu Simfon Siatya Kunchia Nyama Pacham Shalomja Eriala La Sasa Dia Sandido Tukarawa Sandukata Miana Oh, she hi hallelujah on Yan Chanchu. What a tassila, Shipyantia, who was so so sundi. Elekashun Sishomo, Shishiva Sansit in Diotiando, O Coquati, Quishuasha, Mohansio Tio. Wundu duty to the Ratam, Ha Kashoshun Sas. I ask God to be your protector as well as we. And I ask that you all follow the bright light within you, the God that is within you and the life that is to be your own. Be who you are. Live as if you are gaining power every day, for you are. Gain your personality and gain the wealth of the universe as it comes to you as you can handle it. We love you. We honor you. We respect you. We believe in you, believe in us and God, and believe 
that all things are possible and believe that they are possible for you. We thank you for listening. We thank you for the open ears and the open heart and open mind. Bless you and may the light always be in front of you to light your path. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Hello. Hi, Jim. Hi, Welcome how are back. you? Oh, thank you. We Water. are good. Yes. I know. We're a bit, well, not quite because we started a little bit later, but wow. how are you doing? Could you feel I, that energy? Yeah, it was very good. <clears throat> it, was, it was Uriel? Yes. Okay. Yes, it was Uriel. <laughs> oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> There's so many connections to Uriel here. It's not funny. So, um... So that's good. But anyway, um, does anybody have a closing blessing for us? Um, yeah, we'll we'll just do one. We'll keep it short for today because uh, I'm sure you're yeah, it's running you're late. tired. Yeah, it's running late. So. Um, I uh, okay. I'll I'll just do it for today. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Thanks. Kya kare ki kyo kuturu akala na 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 kuturu akala li kya kara na 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 kataka tulu kario kutu nunduru akali kya kario kutu tuno kari kali akya kutu tuno ru kala la turu nara kyo kutu ko. I kuruala na kiu kutu, sanara i okolonda aka akari o kutu, toku akata, ni kiaka, tuku akata kata. Honor each other in word and deed. Respect all those things that you see in others because they are of God. When you look at someone else, see God in them because that is what you should see when you look at mankind. We love you dearly, and we see the bright lights that, that are within you and that you are using to light your way. Find that God is with you in a very special and unique way and that his love will be with you always. Keep the light shining. Let it shine wherever it can. Much love to you, and we will be there to also give you guidance. Thank you, uh, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I almost said Will. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. That's okay. Will was just here within the last week, actually. Did you know that? No. Will was here um, at my house just a few days ago. He's up from Texas. A lot of people are visiting you. Yes, and more to come. I have people coming from Germany, England, um, maybe um, New Hampshire, Vermont. Wow. California. So, Jim, yes, do you see like any kind of a healing yes. center coming your way? I hope. I don't no, I don't know what it is, but I welcome people to come visit. That's wonderful. It's beautiful. And there are many Thank coming. You. I've I've heard many say that they're coming to the to the states or to come visit here or wherever. It's things are happening. So that's very cool. good. Very good. So thank you everybody for participating today. Thank you to the Angel Group uh, for your questions. Um, and thank you for everyone's questions. They were very good, and I think they were useful for everyone to use it in their own lives. So I always like, you know, when that happens that way. Um, Wonderful. Um, 
so everyone benefited from everybody's question. And Tukur was a trooper today because I had we had a trillion questions. Um, so I say thank you. Tukur. <laughs> Very and good. So Thanks. thank you. And thank you, Sabrina, uh, for doing the hosting today. Excellent job. I appreciate it. You're welcome, Jim. And uh, if you want a session with Jim, please go to humancolony.org. Remember that um, in August, I'm going to have two weeks where I will not be doing sessions. So That's right. Um, and I'm already full for this week. So... A lot of people are getting getting in there before the uh, before I go away for a while. So I still have next week's to schedule, but there's already people on there for next week too. So if you do want a session, uh, come quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. -bye. Have a great day. Bye -bye. Thank you. Much love. Thank you, Jim. Have a great.